Well, guys, you know, uh, you guys might be confused, Dan and Bobby. We were only supposed to run two questions and have our, our guests come on. And I've been stalling, but, but it's a live show. So sometimes <laughs> things happen. We actually do have our guest on. He, he's joined us. He's uh, actually kind of well known for interrupting RZA. Uh, so I thought he was going to join earlier. Uh, but, but can we get a mic check from our, our special me? guest? Dan? Can you hear me? We can, we can hear you just fine. That was such a dis- that's a, such a disrespectful introduction, man. <laughs> that's a, such a, yo, that introduction is dis- disrespectful as shit. And you said it in the most common voice you could say it would make it even more disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, if you don't recognize the voice, we got Donna Rawlings on the line here. Yo, son, son, up, I just Dave? got off stage. Son, I'm in Ohio, son. Dave did some shit tonight, son. I know this ain't got nothing to do with your movie. I'm going to get to the movie. But, like, <laughs> yo, we lit this shit up, bro. I ain't been around people. I ain't been around people in so long. This is the first time I performed, like, in, like, 80 days, son. And he wow. made, like, a little, he made a, um an outdoor comedy club. You got to do the motherfucking temperature check, swat, all that shit. You know what I mean? It ain't unsafe. You know what I'm saying? Because they, you got to get six feet. But we just perform, and I just lit these motherfuckers up. And Wait. before I'm going go on stage, he forget that I'm on the stage, and he say he's my friend, son. <laughs> yo, yo, and then look, 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 look. I'm sorry. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm sorry, son. Okay, then, yo. And then this nigga get on the phone. Kevin Hart FaceTime, son. He FaceTime me on stage, so now the crowd going crazy, and he forgot I'm on the goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> yo. But yo, I got one question: Did y'all have on mask or not? <laughs> did you do the comedy with with the mask on, or you did without the mask? So, so uh, Donnell just dropped out the, the audio channel. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. He's, he's on his phone in Ohio, and, and something just happened, but he, he's jumping back on. I see him back in the waiting room. Uh, okay, Donnell. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. back on. Did you hear Bobby's question there? No, nah, I didn't hear the question. I got cut off. I talked too much. What was the question? I said, what were you doing? Did you do the show with the mask on or mask off? Nah, we didn't do, we, we got, I ain't doing no goddamn show with no mask on, son. <laughs> Don't hire me, son. Fuck that. Ride or die, nigga. What we doing? Yo, people ain't stop fucking. When AIDS came out, you put the mask on, nigga. <laughs> oh, shit. Nah, no, I, I, it's no mask. Everybody comes, everybody come through, niggas get the corona test and all that shit. But wow. it's no mask. You can't be on stage. But it's like, everybody is not like close up like the scene used to be. Right. It's weird. It's outside. It's spread out. So when, you see your, so when you see your homie, you don't give no pound, you just nod, right? Just give him a nod. Give nigga, you a I, nod. Yo, I'm like you, nigga. I was in that vegan shit a year before that. That fist pound <laughs> shit everybody laughed about. Yeah, all right, nigga. <laughs> well, yo, yo, well, so thanks for taking some time to, to join us, man. Oh, we really shit, appreciate it. I talked the whole time, man. I, talk, I ain't gonna, nah. Yo, I'm excited about next week. It's going to be fun. Well, listen, well, well, Mustafa, next, go ahead. Yeah. Yo, well, next week, so to, to announce to everyone, so Donnell... Uh, he's going to be hosting with Mike Sargent, a film critic, uh, Petey Wheatstraw, a uh, Rudy Ray Moore film. And, and Donna, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about Petey Wheatstraw and Rudy Ray Moore? And, well, Rudy and Ray Moore, if you don't know, don't, uh, Eddie, Eddie, Murphy, uh, Eddie Murphy introduced him to the world in, um, in Dolomite. You know, and for me, I'm excited about it, too, because this guy was like, we look at pioneers. We look at people like John Singleton, RZA. We look at people that do stuff in film, but we forget about people that was doing it when it was like pretty much no help and no acceptance from nobody. And that's the case with him. He did it himself. He controlled everything. Uh, Well, this is a live show. And uh, like I said, Donnell is somewhere in Ohio, probably without good cell service. So. Donnell just dropped, but but Bobby, why don't you continue that thread? Because I had initially proposed, or actually Dan proposed doing Dolomite, and I, and I threw that your way of doing Dolomite, but but you really want to do PD Weestraw instead. Uh, yeah, well, I, thought you know, that, I thought I thought that you know was, you know of course Dolomite um, made famous with the Eddie Murphy movie My Name Is Dolomite, but out of the films that he done that he did i think pd Weestraw was one of the funniest craziest uh bravest films he does he does things in that film that's outlandish ridiculous and uh yeah. and brave you know what i mean i yeah. was talking don i was i was don i was telling him that you know even though dolomite he's known for dolomite but in pd Weestraw, he's doing things in that film yo that's like crazy like what made him do that like what made like- him Acid, Jump off. acid yeah. made him do that. It had to be acid. That might have been acid <laughs> of mushrooms. There's certain drugs that can get you there. 
Yeah, he had to be on I, something crazy, yo. Yo, something that's it's so psychedelic. And then it's so it's like it's horror, it's serious, it's funny, it's nostalgic, it's everything. Yeah. And it's somebody that you when you look at it like like who thinks like that? You know, there's only a handful of people that think like that. Yeah. Who think like outside of and do something different, you know? And also when you, you know when you show the um I'll, I'll be tuning in next week to check it out and uh, hear you. I, I I know it's gonna be so much funnier with you with you <laughs> clowning on this dude. But no. also the music in there, the music in the in the in the film also, the soundtrack is incredible, actually. People didn't know that Rudy Ray Moore was also a musician and he had a band and uh and he toured as a musician with a band and he never, you know, he didn't make it. And he eventually ended up working at the record store. And at this record store, he, you know, this this wino would come in and tell him these stories about, you know, like like raps or whatever. And he would memorize them or record them and eventually retold them. But then he took it to the next level by taking the lyric and turning it into an entire movie, which he did with Dolomite and he did with P.D. Wheatstraw, the devil's son-in-law. <laughs> Oh, that's mm -hmm. so dope. Why you ain't doing it with me, man? You gonna be on vacation or something? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing during the quarantine? That's fucked up, sir. You just gonna be say, I promise I won't stop talking. I promise I'll shut the fuck up, sir. I'm past that, sir. And I realized that just listened to you now. I was excited, sir. <laughs> oh, bon, bon. Oh, He's so excited that, that, that he dropped again. Uh, so hopefully I'm back because I have one more question for him. But but one thing I like to tell everyone is, so we already made the ticket for PD Weechaw available now, and like I said, Donnell Rawlings and Mike Sargent will be be co-hosting it uh, next week on Friday. So if you guys want, you can go on to 36cinema.com after the showing, and Donnell is back on, but oh, he's coming off on off. But you can go to 36cinema.com right now, and the ticket's already available within the next 12 hours. The ticket's 25% off, and. And Donnell, you're back on. I know you yeah, probably got four trips down in Ohio. So one question I had for you, and we just announced that the tickets are already on sale. Um, one question I have for you is, we were talking earlier this week just about, you know, minority-owned business, right? Right. And minority minority driven and investing in yourself. Uh, and, and and when I watched Dolomite, and and I, and I got good Eddie credit, I didn't even know about Rudy Ray Moore, and I didn't even know people consider him the godfather of rap, even. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that part of that story is just so cool that, that he really doubled down and invested himself and was like, yo, if these guys don't believe in the story, I'm still going to tell my story and get it and out. And that's there. what, and, and when we spoke on it, that's what I was saying about the story. You look at like the movie, you look at the storyline, but the bigger thing is what got him to the point where he could do something like that. A lot of people won't invest in themselves. A lot of people don't believe in themselves enough to know that they are a brand and they could do something and stay consistent with it. So and I want to congratulate you too, Donnell, on your podcast. Oh, um, thank you, man. It's really great. I, I mean, uh, I ran into you at the on the at the Joe Rogan spot, right? And you and you said you was going to do a podcast, and, and a lot of people say and don't do, right? Um, and so I think I think you know, in 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 line with the Rudy Ray Moore uh, concept of saying, doing, and bringing to fruition, you know, what I mean, it's important for you know for young people you know, for middle-aged people and even older people is never, you know, investing in yourself, right? Like they say, knowledge of self, investing into yourself is the best investment you can make. The, the second best investment is, in, is, you know, investing to your children, right? But you have to take care of yourself before you even could do that. So, you know, seeing people that do it over the time, you know, you know, Donnell being one right now in, in today's society, uh, Rudy Ray Moore, a comedian, artist, rapper, singer who, who pioneered it in his day. Uh, uh, there's a th there's a through line to that, you know what I mean? So I know that's going to be a lot of a lot of stories you're going to have for us. Uh, yeah, man. On P.D. Weestraw. Listen to the man name. P.D. Weestraw, the devil's son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and guys, can you, can you just one time... I think a lot of people took the Joe Rogan podcast a certain way and don't realize that you guys have a, a long-standing friendship. Yo, let, just me tell, let, let, me, let me explain something. Whatever <laughs> people feel about, whatever people want to feel about that Joe Rogan interview, I, I like, like Rizzo said, I had an idea of doing a podcast. I was nervous about doing it for a while. And it started coming together on the show before the Rizzo show. I was excited about it. And then I was excited to be with 
the RZA and be around him. And then the RZA told me right out the gate, I said, can I get a beat for the podcast? You could have said, get the fuck out of here, right? And you said, I got you. And I was so amped, man. I was so amped. I don't apologize for anything, but I was so amped. I'm around a legend. I'm around somebody that I grew up watching them. That I think that some of my thoughts is parallel in the sense of putting a group unit together and always thinking outside the box. And I was excited. But at the same man. time, it ain't nothing but respect. And that was and fun. That's what, I think it that was, was fun. It was fun, yo, bro. It was you know fun. I mean? And you had jokes too, but you didn't tell them motherfuckers you was joking <laughs> on me before. Yo, nobody <laughs> knew that side. Nobody knew. Nobody knew how you looked at me before we even turned the motherfucking cameras on, right? <laughs> You looked at me and you told me you wanted to do the comedy shit, son. You was like, bong, bong, I'm about to fuck all this shit. I'm about to do the comedy shit. I was like, nigga, how many motherfucking swords you got, nigga? <laughs> I'm like, now this dude gonna do some Wu-Tang comedy, son. I'm like, nigga, just let me have something, son. <laughs> And then as soon as the camera came on, you flipped it on me, son. You <laughs> no, flipped it on me, son. Nah, but you was, hold on, but you was, I was drinking, you was drinking Hennessy, son. I was drinking uh, turmeric. I was yeah, drinking, nigga, you was on that <laughs> fucking <laughs> vegan, vegan shit. I was yeah. on a different planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, I don't know, but you did, you didn't let us, you didn't let me bully it. You know I was sipping. And then you said, yo, I drink everybody under this, I drink everybody on the table, but that's not what we hear about, right? <laughs> and we need, and we need get to talk, oh, I'm sorry. And we need even get to talk about the wallet. Oh, well, next the time. The wallet. <laughs> yeah, the wallet, the vegan wallet. Yeah, well, uh, Moose, well, we'll do that next time. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say, look, here go, you guys, I got to say this. I ain't never said this on, on no forum or whatever, right? And people keep fucking with me, right? When I did Breakfast Club, Charlamagne talking about, yeah, I'm going to ruin your podcast. I'm going to ruin this interview like you ruined the RZA interview. I said, nigga, let me explain something, nigga. I didn't try to ruin the RZA interview. I just ruined it. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I didn't put no effort into it. You putting the effort into fucking my shit up. Uh, you know? Shit. Nah, but that, I'm was, excited, that was fun. That was yeah. fun. It's going to be fun next week, man. Uh, I'm, uh, man, I'm, I'm so glad you, um, you know, the 36 Cinema reached out to you. This has been fun for me. This is my third one. Um... I almost get, I'm almost getting addicted to it, so I'm glad you're coming oh, in. Oh, I could tell. Listen, to add man, some energy to this. Yo, um, when, when one of my producers from my podcast, the Down at Rollins show, he was like, you, he was like this, he on your dick, hard as shit, no homo, son. He was like, <laughs> he said, he said, yo, Rizzo got some new shit. I was like, man, I ruined that nigga podcast. What are you fucking with, right? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> the, and then he told me, he told me about the concept of 36 Chambers, right? And it was like weird because I knew it's something different. And everything, and I was like, so niggas gonna just watch a movie together and just talk about it. And then I tuned in on the first one. I wanted to interrupt that one, but it was the first one. But I was like, <laughs> I was like this, I was like this, this some good shit. Donnell's energy is, is too much for the the telecommunications network of Ohio. Uh, he once again dropped, but in case Donnell isn't able to jump back on, I just want to remind you guys one more time that the tickets for PD Weech Draw are already available on uh, <laughs> people are just like sending in so many comments right now dying on this about this conversation we are basically on a a, a three-way call right now with several thousand uh, people listening <laughs> nah it's gonna be good man i wish you was doing it hey, really, hey yo hey dave was... well hold on but hold on so so with dave at yo he um he y'all doing stage tonight now oh, we so in yellow spring yeah Tell he's him, still on give, stage give him, give him, on, my, give him my blessings you know what i mean he always, he's always, he always doing something positive to tell him, you know, bong bong and blessings from over here from the Wu family. Oh, oh damn, they eating. I was going to ask him, did he want to say something? Oh. Imagine two slaves in a cotton field and one is like, hey, man, what's wrong? <laughs> what the heck was that? You sit down. Pastor says I got season of depression. All right. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we um yo, it's just dope. It's a good feeling out here, man. The show the show's been going good, the energy's been going good. Well y'all just tell y'all keep safe, keep rocking the world. For sure. We're looking forward to next week and uh bong bong and I'll check I'll, I'll be checking out your podcast, yo. I appreciate you and thanks for letting me interrupt again, son. <laughs> bong bong. <laughs> All right. Of course. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining, and we look forward to having you next week for PD Weech Draw, the 
like I said, the tickets are already on sale for the next 12 hours. They're 25% off. Um, so we really hope you, you join us. And if you like this uh, showing so much, the video on demand will be available on Monday on the Hollywood Theater and Alamo Draft House's platform. And the store, messaging, the store team keeps messaging me, remind you guys that uh, we dropped a poster. So on your way out, drop by the merch table located at 36cinema.com slash, slash merch. That's 36cinema.com slash merch to pick up your Mystery of Chess Boxing poster. There's a little under 100 left. Uh, but Donnell, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I really look forward to, to having you on next week. Oh, man, it's going to be fun. I'm excited about it, man. And Mustafa, thank you. And thanks, 36 Cinema, for having me. And uh, thanks uh, to uh, the family out there who all joined us for this viewing of Mystery of Chess Boxing. We appreciate you. And thanks for spending your Friday evening with us. And until next time, bong bong. Wizards out. <laughs>